Hey guys, welcome to another video. This is Doug, this is Doug Sells. Today, I'm just gonna take you through what I do as a part-time reseller. Someone who has a full-time job to go to eight to five, or for me, like 8.30 to five every day. It definitely becomes a challenge when you have these, when you have these envisions of you making all this money, reselling and doing your side job, but you really only have time to do so much when you have a full-time job how could you spend you know 30 or 40 minutes driving to work you spend eight and a half to nine hours there and then 30 or 40 minutes driving back there only at least so much time to thrift list stain you know treat stains do all the things that you need to do so this is just what i go through i just woke up i didn't just wake up <laughs> i just got out of the shower it's about 7 45 and uh, I gotta be at work at 8.30, so I'm kind of pushing it this morning. They're a little lenient, so if I get there at 8.45, it's not a big deal. Yeah, I uh, just got out of the shower, let my dog out, gotta take care of him, gotta make sure he's fed, everything. Yeah, that's about it. Then I gotta go to the post office. All right, guys, I'm ready for work. <laughs> gotta let my dog in and make sure he's taken care of. I gotta give him a treat, and then we'll hit the road. But uh, yeah, it's about uh, almost close to eight o'clock. Takes me about 30 minutes to get to work. So let's do it. All right, let's let him in. Look, he's waiting on me. Look at him. He's waiting on me. Yeah, I need to cut my grass. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Come on. He's just waiting on me. He's just waiting on me being a good boy, aren't you? Say hey to the people. That's Rocco. Say hey, Rocco. You got food and water? Yep, you do. Okay, good boy. Good boy. I love you, man. Good boy. There's my shipments for today. I got two, I did these last night. If I have shipments during the day, I usually do them at night. It's usually the last thing I do before I go to bed and after I'm doing all my work. So they're sitting here on the counter, ready for me to go in the morning. So I don't have to do them in the morning. A lot of times if I wake up, I have three different alarms. And a lot of times if I wake up and I've sold something overnight, I'll get up a little bit earlier and try to process a package that morning so I can take it with me, but it doesn't always work out. But I got two hours, two days to ship, so I have plenty of time. There, there are Rocco's treats. There are two shirts I was stain treating and they're hanging to dry. So we'll move them out of the way so we can get in here, give my buddy a treat. I give him a treat every day before I leave. Look how good he is. Look how good he is. There you go, buddy. I love you, man. See you later. Okay, off to work we go. I'm just on a little back roads here, guys, so don't worry about me driving and filming myself. I'm at a stop sign. Or there's, I only have to stop. Anyway, go into the post office to drop these off, and then I will be headed to work. Luckily, I live like two minutes from my post office, and it's pretty much on the way where I have to go. So I know not everybody is that fortunate but uh, I have been very fortunate to land myself right by my post office. All right, packages are dropped off. I'm pulling out of the USPS parking lot. No traffic, that is awesome. Oh, I got my radio on still, I forgot. Anyway. Headed to work now. I'm obviously not gonna record while I'm driving to work, but yeah, that's how my morning starts right there. I don't get coffee until I get to work. So we have Starbucks inside our work and I usually get a Starbucks dark brew coffee every morning. And I'm friends with the baristas there. So uh, they hook me up sometimes. All right guys, I'll uh, see you at work. Okay, I've made it to work. I'm in the parking garage. It's about 8.38. I'm good. I'm not late. I'm not late. I'm good. I'm gonna walk and I'm gonna get some coffee and then I'm gonna walk to my desk and I'm gonna start my walk day. So uh, uh, when I get to my desk, I might film just a couple things at my desk just to show you how I set up, but actually, you know, it doesn't interfere with my job, you know. So, uh, but I won't be able to talk during that time because there's people around me and stuff and that would just be weird and it's probably frowned upon for me to even film inside of work anyway but uh that's my morning so far and uh yeah i'll see you guys again around lunchtime because i got a little treat of something i do sometimes during lunch
Okay guys, it is lunchtime and I'm on the elevator. I'm going back up to my truck. And today, during lunch, I'm gonna go to a thrift store. Yeah, so being a part-time reseller, you know, it's, I usually can't hit the thrift stores until after work and that's usually 5.30 or 6. And some of the small mom and pop stores close around 5 or 6, so I don't really get a chance to really go to those a lot. So every now and then during my lunch hour here at work i will send an email to my manager and say hey i've got some errands to run during lunch probably going to be a little bit longer than usual i get an hour for lunch so when i say a little bit longer than usual it gives me you know about 15 to 30 minutes extra for lunch and then i just make that time up by coming in earlier staying later so yeah but that's what i gotta do sometimes as a part-time reseller i shouldn't be thrifting today i'm only doing it because i'm doing the video but i have plenty of inventory at home i've done two buyouts in the past two or three weeks and uh, i have a lot of other items that haven't been listed yet so but i'm just doing this today i'm gonna go to a little mom and pop thrift store it's uh it's actually not mom and pop they they help out a lot of recovering alcoholics and people trying to like restart their lives and stuff like that and it's really really cheap it's really unorganized so you have to dig through everything yeah so we're gonna head that way now and guys you saw me with some screens up uh at work at my desk now i don't want you to think that i do listings and mess with ebay and stuff like that instead of doing my job i only do it when i had some downtime like uh Usually during lunch, I will, you know, get some drafts up if I have drafts sitting there, do some listings, or I have a lot of stuff I have to fix with my eBay store, like how it's, uh, how it's listed and what categories it's in and stuff like that. So I do a lot of that, and I, uh, I put up Depop listings as well during lunch. Sometimes I'll usually go to our cafe, get some food, and come back to my desk and uh, eat really quick, and then spend the rest of my lunch doing that. So you just gotta find the time where you can. I know not everybody has that luxury to do that, but this is just what I do, and I'm lucky enough to have about four, four maybe five thrift stores within driving distance of my work, all within like a 15 minute drive. So uh, I'm able to do that. So yeah, I'm on my way now, and I'll let you guys know when I get there. All right, here we are. That was a much quicker drive than I thought. It was about a seven minute drive to here, so. I looked out there. Uh, I have been researching vintage denim. So I'm gonna be looking through the denim today to see if I can find anything uh, from, you know, from what I've been researching, see if anything sticks out. I wanna start uh, trying to sell vintage denim and we're just gonna see what else we can find. I'm gonna bring you guys in with me if I can and show you how unorganized this thrift store is. But I have found some good stuff here before. Okay, I'm not finding a lot of denim. Everything's so out of order. But I have found a few things here that I can get really cheap and resell. So, wish me luck on the rest of this trip. All right, we are done in the thrift store. I spent about an hour in there. So, nothing overly exciting here, but I paid $11 for five items. And so, anytime you keep it that low, there's an opportunity to make some money even if it's not that much. Uh, the first item I got is a pair of LL Bean shorts. Still had the tag on them. So I got paid $2 for these shorts. They're women's shorts, but still $2 for LL Bean shorts with the tag on it still. Next is a Drake shirt. If you've heard of this, this uh, brand, it's, it's more of a trendy, popular brand. Now it's probably not gonna be big money. It may be in the 18 to $20 range um but it should sell now onto vintage i found a vintage orvis shirt looks like it's never been worn but it has a lot of uh, lint and stuff like that on it so i'll have to clean that up but i really don't think this has ever been worn it's a 
the collar is still real in good condition stuff like that so pretty nice there all right this one's not another big money grabber either but it's a uh, Ole Miss Rebels hotty toddy it's like a t-shirt material hoodie and uh, it's the brand you've probably seen this tag a million times in thrift store comfort colors which is just a very reliable comfortable type of shirt so like I said I paid 11 bucks for five items I should be able to sell this for 15 or 20 bucks and lastly I'm taking a chance on this one this is a minor league baseball shirt the Toledo mud hit mud hens it's from 2008 so there's a good chance that this team doesn't even exist anymore like minor league teams shift all the time and change up so there's a good chance this team does not even exist anymore and that's what I'm hoping for so I can sell this shirt uh, for the you know in the 20 to 25 dollar range if it does exist i'm probably looking you know 10 to 15 bucks all right guys i'm back at work uh that thrift store is definitely a challenge it's so unorganized i don't i don't i believe i would go there so much more if it was more organized like i, I don't mind digging for stuff but it's one of those stores where every few items of clothes you swipe through like one falls off the hanger all the clothes are you'll get like two or three you see the front of it but then like the next six is the back of the shirt so you gotta do around and you know if you're thrifting when you're flipping through shirts man it that's that becomes a pain and then some areas are just so packed in so tight that it's hard to go through them and then it's like just mixed up with women's clothes men's clothes t-shirts pants it's all mixed in together like there is no department. There's no categories. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It is so ridiculous. And they had a lot more items there that I would have bought if they weren't so stained or had like just awful holes in them. There was probably about 15 items I would have bought. But I let a lot of them go because like some things you can get by with stains and holes in them and stuff. But others you just can't and these were so bad you just couldn't you just couldn't get by them though no denim like no men's jeans really there wasn't a lot of men's jeans it was mostly like women's denim and jeans and pants and stuff like that it's it's insane the five items for 11 bucks can't beat that you never have to hit the big home run i'm hoping to turn that 11 dollars realistically into about 60 bucks you know 60 to 7 bucks Hopefully, that would be that would be ideal. Might not, but you know, hey. That's also one of those stores that closes at five, and it's not open on Sunday. So literally, the only chance I ever have to go to that store if I don't go during my lunch is on Saturday. And when I go out thrifting and stuff on Saturday, I'm not dealing with that. I'm not dealing with that on a Saturday. I'm gonna hit the Goodwills, Salvation Armies yard sales and stuff like that on Saturday so I'm just not but this is what I have to do part-time reselling sometimes part-time reselling yeah squeeze it in when you can but I was there for about an hour and I guess the total I was gone for hour and 15 hour and 20 minutes which isn't that bad uh, now I'm gonna head to our cafe and I'm gonna grab some food real quick and I'm gonna eat at my desk, scarf it down as quick as I can and get back to work. Hopefully it's a smooth rest of the day. That means I need gas or I am going to be walking home. And yes, it's dirty. The thing is dirty. So I'm off work guys. Uh, we're heading home. I'm gonna head over to a little gas station real close to where I work fill up And it's been raining all day since I got back from the thrift store during lunch. It's been raining Ever since I actually got stuck in it Walking back with my food and got really wet And well on the ride home The crazy drivers in Memphis there's bound to be a wreck somewhere. So I'm sure traffic will be backed up at some point Let's go get some gas so I can even make it home. All right, guys, I am home, and uh, I guess the wind blew over my garbage cans, but oh well. So this side of the garage here, I'm gonna have to clear it out and put some shelving here, and this is where I'm gonna have to put some inventory. 
against this wall right here. So that's gonna be a project. So, cause I keep getting more and more inventory and I'm just gonna need somewhere to put this stuff. Now for one of my favorite parts of the day, we get to see Rocco. This is the part where Rocco thinks we left him forever. And then all of a sudden we come back and he's all excited. He's like right behind this door, probably holding a toy. Let's see. Rocco, you don't have a toy. You don't have a toy. Oh, he's so happy. He's so happy. He's so happy. He's so happy. Oh, goodness. Oh, no, Rocco. Hey, buddy. Say hey to the people. Oh, oh, oh. Say hey to the people. Say hey to the people. Say hey to the people. Hey, buddy. Did you have a good day? Did you have a good day? Did you? Okay. Okay. All right. So I actually made it home a pretty good time. It's only about 10 till 6. I usually don't get home till 6 or later. So I made it home with pretty good time. So this is the part where I let the dog out. And I change into some more comfortable clothes. And I figure out dinner. Do I want to have a drink or not? I do like my bourbon. I like my bourbon. So there you go. Sometimes I get a drink. But yeah, so I change clothes, figure out dinner. Um, but tonight, I'm taking a break because I've been working on the resale business consistently and constantly since Saturday morning. I didn't do it Saturday night, then all day Sunday, then Monday night, and then Tuesday night. So I'm taking a break tonight and I am going to go to the bar and hang out with some friends and watch the Memphis Grizzlies play basketball, which is what we do a lot around here so that's what i'm going to be doing tonight but i'll show you what i usually do I'll show you what i usually do all right usually i start working at about seven o'clock you know i come home and do dinner and relax for a little bit seven or seven thirty is when i start working here is my working room it is messy so it is a messy room i'm sure all your rooms kind of look similar so here we go. I have uh, two lights here. There we go. Let's get this light on and this light on. Set it back. So I've got one light kind of high here, so it'll hit the so it'll hit the item high, and then this one's a little bit lower, so it'll get the lower part. And we have a a mannequin here. So we can set the mannequin here. And we can put the shirt on. Some shirts just look better on the mannequin. Some shirts look better hanging up. And some shirts look better laid out flat. So I have a spot here to hang up. All these holes were done by the previous people who lived here. And anyway, I can hang a shirt up right here and take pictures of it. I have my little table here for laying the shirt down and measuring it. I have my measuring tape right there. And over here is inventory that I have. This is a buyout that I did from a lady just this week. Uh, she had some vintage women's clothing that I was able to go pick up from her. I did not do a video on this, but you're just getting a, a quick sneak peek of some of these items. Uh, she had about 16 items and I paid her 200 bucks. It ended up being about $15 per item. Uh, now, I did research most of these items before I bought them because she sent me a lot of pictures through email. $15 per item. I should be able to get my money back. No problem. Now, here is a pile of clothes here. This is from the buyout that I did from the 80-year-old man. There's a video on this buyout. I'll put it down in the description so you can go see it. But normally, about 7 or 7.30, I would start to work on this. I would start to work on this. I would come over here and I'll put this up here. And then just, you know, that doesn't look good hanging up. Anyway, this is the camera though. It may look better with, you know, when I take the picture, but this may look better on the mannequin too. Who knows? I don't know. And this is what I would start on. Okay. Here is my other room. Yes, it is also a wreck and it needs to be straightened up and Organize and all that good stuff, but this is my other room where I come in and I uh, I do my listings I do my shipments. I have not made any sales today boo-hoo 
I've not made any sales, but uh, this is where I sit down and print out shipping labels and do listings and research and stuff like that. You know, I was just sitting here and I was editing this video and it just seemed so incomplete to me. So I just need to add a few things that I do as a part-time reseller. So when I say I start working at 7.30, I give myself a time limit and I say, hey, I'm gonna take pictures for two hours. And then I sit down on the couch and I edit my photos and I put backgrounds behind them and then I create my drafts. And that usually takes like an hour to an hour and a half, depending on how many photos uh, that I took. So that's one thing that was kind of incomplete on you know, how I work. So I usually try to go to bed about 10.30 or 11, or if I'm on a roll, sometimes I'll stay up a little bit later, but usually 10.30 is my cutoff time. And I do a couple other things as a part-time reseller, guys. It's something that you, I feel like every reseller needs to do, especially if you're a part-time reseller and you only have limited time to go thrifting and go to yard sales and stuff like that. Here, I'll, I'll show you what I do. All right, here we are on Craigslist, guys. Uh, I know Craigslist is kind of a thing of the past, but I've gotten actually a few hits on Craigslist and I actually did a buyout uh, on Craigslist, you know, from Craigslist for a couple of guys. So it has worked out for me. Not as much as I'd want it to, but it has worked. So as you can see here, this is something else I do as a part-time reseller. We go in to display the message and it says sell me your clothes and it basically just has a paragraph here about how I pay money for clothes. I'm basically looking for anything 20 years or older because vintage is my niche. So that's what I would rather sell than anything else. But I have had people reach out to me about other stuff as well. So Craigslist is one thing that I do. And while we're here, we need to just go in and renew these listings. All right, there we go. They're all renewed. Somewhere else I go is here on Nextdoor. Now, I don't know how to view my post. Uh, here we go. So here I am on Nextdoor, and I've basically told everybody that I look for vintage clothing, and I have a vintage resale site, and to reach out to me if you have anything. I have had a few people reach out to me through posts like this on Nextdoor. I have not had anybody reach out to me on this one. I posted one two days ago. I try not to spam Nextdoor with it, but this is the second post I've made like this since January and it is now April the 8th. So that's another thing you can do. And last but not least, we are on Facebook Marketplace. Not all Facebook groups allow the type of post that I made here. So if we go in here, I'm gonna renew the listing. And if we go in and edit the listing, it'll show what I posted. Well, it's not gonna show what I posted. But uh, here I did a looking to buy vintage t-shirts post on Facebook Marketplace. Now Facebook Marketplace alone doesn't allow you to look for things. You have to be buying things. You'd say this listing doesn't offer an item for sale. So, but there are some groups, as you can see, groups in my area that do allow uh, posts like this. So they went into these groups and I think I got a couple hits from that. Another thing you can do is you go here, I just renewed this listing. This is the one I was on before. Uh, what I did here, if we go into edit, what I did here was I listed some shirts that are Memphis related, right? Uh, in my area, they're re Memphis related, but also in the description, I also mentioned that I'm looking to buy shirts as well. So that is something else that I do. So yeah. So those are three extra things I do as a part-time reseller to try to get the people to come to me because like I said earlier, I showed you those clothes. I did a buyout earlier this week from a lady who had some vintage clothes to sell. So it was really easy to go to her and just pick up 16 items or the 80 year old man that I did the buyout from I actually found him on Craigslist. Uh, I went and picked up 36 items from him for $210. Things like that are things that I think I need to do because I can't be in the thrift store all the time. And I can't even go to some of the thrift stores because of the hours. You know, I only have Saturday to go. And Saturday, if I have stuff to list, those are the days I have to get up in the morning and, and work. It, it's hard for me to go thrifting on Saturday, so I gotta get everything listed so I can spend a Saturday yard selling and thrifting. 
I, I look forward to that. Another thing I want to mention is if you're a part-time reseller, even a full-time reseller, don't be afraid to tell people what you do. Like hey, when I first started this, I was like not afraid, but I kind of didn't want to tell people that I resell on eBay just because it, it has a stereotype connected to it, whether you want to believe it or not. And people don't really see that as a real job or anything like that. And they think it's easy money and stuff like that. But this time around, I've been telling everybody knew that I meet, like I go out a lot, like everybody knew that I meet, I tell them what I do. And when I say what I do, I include my job, my career job. And I also include, I'm also a reseller and, I, and what I resell. I've probably got three more buyouts coming up in the next couple of weeks that I have scheduled from people I just talked to. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to do some videos on that too. And also a friend of mine, one day he was in a pinch and needed some money. He is, man, I got a bunch of stuff I was going to take to Goodwill. He said, can I show you if what I have and see if you have anything that you could use for your, your side business? And so I bought like $140 worth of stuff from him. It wasn't vintage stuff, but it's all stuff that would sell. So I bought like $140 worth of stuff from him and it helped him out at the same time. So don't be afraid to tell people what you do and uh, how you do it and stuff like that. So uh, you may come up with some people that are looking to get rid of some stuff. All right, guys, that is the end of the video. I had a different ending before, but like I said, when I was editing the video, it just didn't seem complete. And I feel like I needed to add some more information in there that could be helpful to you guys. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful. Hope you just, you probably enjoyed my dog more than anything. That's fine. You probably came for the title and stayed for the dog. That's fine with me. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's it. If you're new, just subscribe for me, please. Come back, uh, hit that like button. Let's hear some comments and all my socials are on a link down in the description. And I'm going to list some videos that may be helpful for you guys down in the description too. You can go watch those. All right. I'll see you in the next one guys. Take care.